be speaking today with the editor-in-chief of the New England Journal, who we have heard from in the past, Dr. Eric Rubin. Dr. Rubin, warp speed is something that was part of our first conversations many months ago. Here we are. The vaccine is coming out to the public. The thing is, is that we're finding a lot of people aren't trusting the first round because nobody knows how it's going to go. What do you have to say about that? Well, everything in life has risks um, and it has benefits. Um, right now, these the first two vaccines that are likely to come out and be approved in the U.S. use a technology that hasn't been used before. But over the course of two months, at least from what we've heard, uh, because none of the information is yet published, um, they seem very safe. They seem very comparable to other vaccines. So the early data are good. Um, and I think that's encouraging. And we should always think about a vaccine as what it, in terms of what it can cause and for side effects, but also in what it can prevent. And we know that COVID-19 is very common and can be quite severe. And a lot of people asking the question, is this a vaccine that I would get? It would last a lifetime, like maybe the MMR vaccine or the uh, smallpox vaccine? Uh, or is this something that, like the flu shot, we have to get every year? A very good question. We have no idea. Uh, and I, I don't think that any of the data that we're going to have for the, over the next several months is going to be able to answer that question. Right now, we know that antibody levels are go quite high after the at least these the, the most recent vaccines they go up quite high higher than in people who've had a natural infection and then they slowly decline but they don't decline that much at least over the course of a few months uh, and how high they have to be in order to give get protection we don't know okay let's talk about uh, the testing and the trials that have been done that those two aspects of a vaccine seem to be what is concerning the most to people who are saying, yes, I'll get it. No, I'm going to wait until months have gone by um, and they don't want to be among the first to get inoculated. So uh, talk to me about that piece of it. Uh, the trust level with uh, CDC, is it high enough, do you think? I would urge people to focus on not how fast the how fast the vaccine is coming out, but what the real data are. The number of people immunized in these trials has been quite high. Actually, a lot of people have gotten it. Ordinarily, vaccines take a very long time to develop and a very long time to test. And this has been done in a rush. There's no question. But from what I've seen, the quality of these trials is excellent. They've done it the right way. The one thing that we're missing is we don't have more time to watch people after the vaccination. But it's very unusual to have big problems after two months have gone by. And, and all of the patients in these trials have been already followed for two months after receiving a second dose of vaccine. So I don't think that there's a red flag, at least from what we've heard so far. And again, I think you really want to think about the alternative. What would it mean for you as an individual to get COVID? Most people don't get that sick. Some people get very sick. If you're in a high risk group, I think this is a relatively easy call for you. If you're in a lower risk group, remember, there are still young people dying of this disease. So I, I think you really you would really want to seriously consider this. Have we heard of any kinds of side effects to the vaccine that is going to be coming out first? And that is the one, I believe that's the one from Pfizer. So the information that's been made public in the FDA, um, uh, on the FDA website uh, just uh, this morning actually, um, suggests that the side effects that people have experienced are really very similar to that seen with other vaccines. Uh, you get a, a shot. Some people have pain and swelling at the site of the injection and redness. Some people will feel lousy and tired and have headaches and maybe even fever. Um, it goes away in most people, according to the, what they've uh, they've uh, shown, uh, the data that they've shown, goes away in most people in a day or maybe two. So it's pretty transient. And not everyone gets these side effects and very few of them get them severely. It's I guess comparable, 
the numbers look vaguely comparable to something like flu. Uh, can I get you to hang on with me just two minutes so that we can take a break and come back? Um, I have an article here that I kind of want to get your thoughts on. It, uh, it's entitled, Operation Warp Speed, Not So Fast. So can you hang with me? Sure. Thank you, Dr. Rubin. We'll be back in just two minutes. And I'm having a conversation with Dr. Eric Rubin, who is the editor-in-chief of the New England Journal of Medicine about the vaccine, its effectiveness, possible side effects. That was before the break. But I did want to touch on this article, Dr. Rubin, that came out from the American Council on Science and Health uh, just two days ago. And it says, uh, no matter how quickly or successfully vaccines are developed, we have been woefully ineffective in the development of other ways to tame this pandemic. Do you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. If you look at other countries, several, uh, several other countries have had enormous success taking simpler public health measures like mask wearing, social distancing, closing things down, and, um, and test, testing and contact tracing. And we have fallen down badly there. I know that you can't, none of us can foresee uh, when we get new leadership in the White House what an administration is going to do. We do know, though, that the Trump administration and the Biden administration are going to do things, the Biden administration will do things a lot differently. Have you been hearing anything about the way things will change uh, come January and February? I, I suspect things will change dramatically. The, the people who are being brought in to lead the efforts uh, on, on COVID-19 are a very different set of people with a different set of priorities. Uh, I, I know, for example, that the new head of the CDC, a woman named Rochelle Walensky, um, who's coming here from Boston, um, has been very deeply involved in the Massachusetts response to, uh, to COVID-19. And I think she probably comes in with a very different attitude than uh, the current administration has. All right. Mayo Clinic has uh, asked for in uh, past weeks and still looking for people to take part in vaccine clinical trials. What is coming down the pipeline that you're aware of with the other vaccines? We've talked about Pfizer. We know that there are other vaccines in development, numerous. Um, kind of what we can expect in the months to come. So there are two vaccines that have completed trials and applied for emergency use authorization. One is the Pfizer uh, vaccine, which we reviewed by the FDA advisory panel tomorrow. And then next week is a, another vaccine, which is quite similar uh, from uh, a company called Moderna um, that will also go to the FDA. Those trials have been reported out, at least from what we've heard of those two trials, they were remarkably successful. A third vaccine that's completed its trials is, uh, is produced by the company AstraZeneca. Um, that they had a trial that was published uh, today in The Lancet. Um, it's a more complicated story um, on its efficacy. Um, it, it worked, but it may not have worked quite as well as these uh, two other vaccines. That vaccine uses a very different techno technologic approach. There are several late phase candidates um, that are still undergoing testing. Unfortunately, for several of them, the trials have been delayed somewhat. And so we may not get answers from those for a while. Uh, but there are, there are several vaccines that use a technology similar to the one that AstraZeneca has been employed. And then there are a few what are called subunit vaccines that are still out there. So we should be learning more. It, those other vaccines are on a slower track, though. And the chemical makeup with these vaccines, much different from one company to the next. We know that uh, some of the vaccines that are coming out don't have to be stored at uh, super cold temperatures. Others do. So uh, those will be the ones that go to rural areas and whatnot. Uh, the chemical makeup is going to be, well, <laughs> it's, it's everything. It's very, very important. Um, but will that determine a lot in the effectiveness of it? We, I think we have to see. Okay. All of these vaccines target the same protein, the same viral protein. Um, and so they're more similar than different, but the way of eliciting an immune response is different for each vaccine. 
and uh, there are a few different classes. Right now, we're heavily involved in the messenger RNA class. The next data that we're that are coming out the uh, the vaccine that was tested, the AstraZeneca vaccine, are in what are called viral vectors. And then there will be subunit vaccines that we'll be hearing about uh, at some point. As always, Dr. Rubin, I so respect all the information that uh, you give and your time. And I just can't thank you enough for making the time every time I request uh, if you can talk because of something new that has come out with COVID-19. So, sir, thank you.